Have you ever been making that familiar drive home from work or perhaps the grocery store on a Wednesday? And next thing you know, what should have been a 30 minute drive seems like all of a sudden you're pulling into the driveway. You're aware that you've been making complex decisions for the last half hour or so, yet you don't really know where the time has passed. Or perhaps your operating system on your computer or for your smartphone got an update. Recently my phone did and I noticed that when I text message, if I'm not careful, I might accidentally put thumbs up or thumbs down or ha ha. And if your profession is that you're a pastor and people are sharing sometimes really sad but important news in their life via text message, the last thing you want to do is accidentally place a ha ha on some news like that. The problem is that we have these habitual, predictable pattern, default ways of being in the world. So we find that whether it's tuning out on the drive home that we're so familiar with or whether it's the operating system on our computer or our smartphones defaulting to a certain way, if we're not aware of those things, it can have some pretty unfortunate consequences to our life. The Enneagram as a personality tool is really a tool that's meant for spiritual growth to help us to awaken to all that God has called and created us to be so that we can let go of the things that get in the way of us living from the person that God would like, love us to be. You've been aware of the times that you are asleep to the reality of your own life. The Apostle Paul said it like this, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Bon Jovi sang, the more things change, the more things stay the same, and Kenny Chesney has sung much the same. From the beginning of scripture, from the law, the prophets, and even the writings, God's people are instructed over and over again to love God, to love their neighbor, and to avoid chasing after lesser things. And yet over and over again, they're ignoring God, neglecting their neighbor, and running after things which diminish their humanity. Scripture speaks of our flesh, not primarily just talking about the fact that we have an embodied existence, but referring to the notion that we are all broken, experiencing disconnection from God, ourselves, and others. Our flesh, in this sense, manifests itself in our disordered desires, unnerving thoughts, and selfish actions. We see this from the very beginning when Adam and Eve want to live apart from God's good order, creation, and dream from the world. But they cannot not use what God has given them so they over rely on God's good gifts of freedom, curiosity, and exploration. But apart from God, those good gifts, they become enslavement to self, endless questioning and mistrust, and purposeless wandering. Our awareness of ourself as distinct from others often leaves us feeling vulnerable, separate, misunderstood, anxious, and even insecure. So we have learned to dress up ourselves my guess is when you were young as a child, there was some time, perhaps you were on the playground with some friends and something about who you were was singled out and probably made fun of. Perhaps it was the way you dressed or how you talked or what your parents did or didn't do. But whatever it was, in that moment when the, your friends were gathered around you and perhaps one of them started to poke fun at that characteristic or attribute, you had a response. Now, all of us, depending on who we are, had different responses. You may have been to cry. You may have gotten angry. You may have started a fight with the person. You may have made fun of them right back. But whatever it was you did, my strong suspicion is when they made fun of you, you didn't say, I am a beloved child of God created in his image. And so whatever it is we did in place of that, begins to show how just like Adam and Eve, we're relying on the good gifts that God has given us, but we're using them in some sense apart from God, apart from our connection to God as the source of our lives. And so the way that we respond then is creating a sense of our personality, but that personality apart from the illumination of God has many shadow sides or what some would call the false self. Frederick Buechner put it this way and says, this is the self we are born with. And then of course, the world does its work, starting with the rather two pretty young women say, and the charming but rather unstable young man who together know no more about being parents than they do about the far side of the moon. 
The world sets in to making us into what the world likes us to be. And because we have to survive after all, we try to make ourselves into something that we hope the world will like a little better than it apparently did the selves we originally were. That is the story of all of our lives. Needless to say, and in the process of living out that story, the original, shimmering self gets buried so deep that most of us end up hardly living out of it at all. Instead, we live out of all the other selves, which we are constantly putting on and taking off like coats and hats against the world's weather. The Enneagram as a tool or system is designed to help us become aware of all of those other selves we put on, like too many coats or hats that are trying to protect us from what we perceive to be the world's weathering down on us and allow us to live from our true, created in the image of God, shimmering selves. So over the next five sessions, we'll be discussing online how it is the Enneagram can help us to do the following. Determine our type. The Enneagram talks about there being nine distinct ways that we have learned to default to in the world. And it'll be an important part of our journey to explore and understand what, what type might I be. And several of the chapters in this book, The Road Back to You, an Enneagram journey to self-discovery, are gonna be devoted to helping us really learn more about all nine types of the Enneagram, but asking questions in such a way that help us to consider our own story and journey and figure out which type we best fit in. It'll then be able to understand our relationship to other numbers in the Enneagram as well. And you'll learn also about your triad, which references how each Enneagram type is located in one of three centers grouped with a particular way of experiencing the world, whether that's gut or instinctual, whether that's this feeling or heart, or whether that is the head or intellect. The more you grow in your understanding of how your own type and the types of the people you love, the more you can cultivate greater empathy and a healthier balance of all three centers within your own life. In other words, to get back to Frederick Buechner's language, we can live from our true shimmering selves, the person that God has created and called you to be. So here's just a few guidelines as we get started on this incredible journey of the road back to you. You're gonna definitely need a copy of this book. It's available in hardback as you see here, but also in ebook format or audiobook. It really doesn't matter which you choose to go out and get, but the important thing is that you'll have that. And as we go through each session, we'll be talking about several chapters of the book. It'll also be helpful if you get the accompanying study guide. It looks very much the same like this, and it's available in paperback or an ebook version. The study guide is written so that you can go through it with a group or individually. And it's my hope, since you're a part of this online group collection, that you will feel comfortable and that this is a safe space that you will interact with other people as you're on the journey. Because while this is work that only you can do, it is work that cannot be done alone or in isolation. Also, we want to be sure not to rush. We want you to take your time to really absorb the chapters, to reflect on them. Perhaps you have a practice of journaling or you might want to take that up during this time. That's going to help you bring your questions, your experiences, your understanding of yourself and of the people you love in your life to our small group experience online and to your greater self-discovery and in the journey. Most importantly then, throughout this journey, we want you to continue to offer yourself the same gift that God offers you, which is gracious love and acceptance. It's going to be no good if every time you're trying to reflect on your life and who you are and what makes you tick, that you feel like you have to beat yourself up or condemn yourself. God encourages you to love your neighbor as you love yourself, which does imply, right, that we are more and more offering ourselves the same grace that God has already offered us in the love of ourself so that we can also better love our neighbor and be compassionate to the world. We want you to do your best to be 100% present 
to the time. So I know in this online format, it'll be tempting to be doing 22 other things while it's happening and multitasking, but as best as you can, try to really focus, whether it's when you're reading or whether you're watching these videos or whether you're interacting with other people online. Try to be present to what you're experiencing in that moment and to what God is doing in other people's lives as well. We want you to be curious and open-minded to different points of view. We know that there are going to be lots of different people that are sharing different thoughts and different perspectives. And we want to welcome all of that as the ways that God is going to shape us and grow us along this journey. We also want you to be open to changing your mind and maybe even how you relate to your world. The point of this isn't to be able to use your understanding of your Enneagram type as an excuse for inappropriate behavior. It's not like I can say because I may be an Enneagram too, well, I'm just always going to be putting my nose where it doesn't belong because I'm just trying to be incredibly helpful. Your number is not an excuse for bad behavior. And so part of what this will require is for us to be open to realizing some of the ways that we've been operating in the world have not served us or those we loved very well. Finally, I want to remind you something that my teacher, Suzanne Stabil, who's one of the authors of this book, reminds me that her mentor shared with her. It's that information is not knowledge and knowledge is not wisdom. In other words, the point of this isn't to accumulate more and more tidbits and fun, interesting facts about all the people you know. The point is for growth and transformation, for compassion towards yourself and for the world. And to do that, we're going to have to open ourselves up, not only to understanding ourselves, but to God's work in our lives. To that end, I'd like to share a poem that can serve as a blessing from John Donahue. It's called For a New Beginning. In out of the way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you were ready to emerge. For a long time, it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness growing inside of you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play at the seduction of safety and the great promises that sameness whispered, heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered would you always live like this. Then the delight when your courage kindled and out you stepped onto new ground, your eyes young again with energy and dream, a path of plenitude opening before you. Though your destination is not yet clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself in the grace of beginning. That is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease and risk. Soon you will be at home in a new rhythm, rhythm for your soul senses the world that awaits you. I'm excited to be on this journey with you of self-discovery and of getting in touch with the person that God, has, that God has called and created you to be. I hope that you will get this book and read chapters one and two and look forward to sharing with you more in session one.